Every time I've walked into this pulpit, God, you've been faithful to show yourself mighty and strong. I'm simply asking you to do it again. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in that sight. Lord, I pray, help me to preach with conviction. Help me to preach with clarity. Help me to preach with concision of speech. And bring joy to my heart as I preach your word, God. I pray for your people, Lord. They need a word from you, God. Christian is sitting down. Stand up. You speak, God. Whatever you have me to say, bring it to my mind. Whatever you don't have me to say, remove it from my mind. Somebody needs to hear you today, God. Please don't let me ruin it. I pray for your people, God. Let remove all distractions, all hindrances. But I pray, oh God, that that uh, that your word will fall on good ground today. And God, before I even finish the sermon, I just want to thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness. And this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. Every morning new mercies we see. Hallelujah. I'm trying to turn it loose, God, but you've been good. You've been faithful. When we haven't been, you still stepped in. When we are faithless, you remain faithful, for you can't deny who you are. Thank you for your faithfulness. Ah, you woke us up this morning. You started us on our way. Got us here safely. You're faithful. Still some things we got to figure out, but even before we get to it, we can know that it's going to be all right. Because you've been faithful. And now, God, I ask you to be faithful again. As we preach your word. Speak now, God. Preaching belongs to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way in this place. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Amen. And amen. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 11. Hallelujah. The Lord is faithful, y'all. Loose your worries, man. Whatever you're worried about, whatever you're concerned about, God is faithful. He'll see you through. All right. Y'all ready for the word? Let's see what God's going to do. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 11, and it reads like this. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to, do, how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? I, I want to, this is the word of the Lord, and I simply want to preach from these words, ask God for everything. Yes. That's all I got. Ask God for everything. <clears throat> and I need your prayers. Hallelujah. Ask God for everything. Pastor Brian Ritz, uh, Summit Church in North Carolina, he tells a story uh, and I'm going to tweak it a bit, but he tells a story about uh, a young man playing uh, uh, JoJo playing PS5 with his, at his friend's house. And he's playing with his friend, and he goes, uh, "Man, I really wish I had a PS5." And he goes, "You know, man, you just need to pray for it, and God will give it to you." So the young boy goes to his house, and um, uh, um, he uh, happened to catch some preachers on TV. And, um, and so he says, well, I'm going to do what my friend said. And he, and he started to pray. And, and basically, he didn't really have any, you know, his parents grew up Catholic, but he didn't know much about prayer. So he started to pray like the preachers on TV. At first, he prayed uh, a little more conservative, Brother Durrell, he, Pastor Durrell. He prayed a little bit with uh, like, a, like our reformed 
conservative evangelical brothers and sisters. Father, you know, the King James Version. Father, thou art worthy of all praise. God, we come. I come to you. I know that you are omnipotent, omnipotent, and you are omniscient. You know everything that needs to be known. And God, I just humbly ask you, if it is in the supplication of your will, to give me a PS5. So the boy went to bed and woke up the next morning, and nothing to nothing, nothing happened. So he said, well, I'm going to keep on praying. And he turned the channel, he's watching TBN, and uh, he finds a preacher that's a little more charismatic. And so he started to name and claim and blab and grab it. He said, well, I could declare and decree that in the name of Jesus, I will possess the PS5 in white, two controllers, and a flat screen TV. He threw that one in there. Woke up the next morning, and it wasn't there. At this point, he's a little frustrated, and so, uh, remember, he's Catholic, and so he grabs, he sees that his family has a statue of Mary, and so he grabs the statue, and he says, okay, it's time to get desperate. And he says, God, if you ever want to see your mother again, he says, you're going to give me this PS5. <laughs> now, as funny as that was, we can learn something from this young man. Because though his prayer wasn't that great, he went to God continually for what he wanted. When we read the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, we always go to, and as we should, we know about the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Keep on going, right? And we always say, give us this day our daily bread. And, that, and the text focuses on asking God for what we need. But I, I believe that this text is giving us something further. That God was saying, I, I don't want you to just ask for what you need. I want you to ask me for everything. See, I believe that sometimes, and, and this is what I really want to get to, sometimes we get to a place where before we get to God, we edit our prayers. We say, I want to pray for this, and we know that God, first of all, for the record, God knows what you want to pray before you pray. Help me, Holy Spirit. But we, we find ourselves saying, well, I'm not going to ask for that because that may not be in his will. I may not ask for, I'm not going to ask for that. Let me just ask for the needs, and I'm not going to tell him my desires. Don't get me wrong, I'm not preaching the prosperity gospel and saying that, that if God's going to give you a, a, a billion dollars overnight. I'm not saying if you do this and that. No, I'm not giving you any of that. But I'm simply saying that God is going to, and we're going to see in the text, that God is saying, stop filtering your prayers. Come to me with everything. Don't, don't knock things off the list before you even ask. My father has this saying. Uh, when we go to uh, stores or, or certain things, see, uh, uh, my dad will say, um, I'll say, well, I don't know if they, uh, oh, let me say this, when we go to restaurants, excuse me, when we go to restaurants, uh, we'll say, well, you know, I really want this, but I want to add this onto it. And I was like, but they're probably not going to do that. My dad will say, no, 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 let them tell you no. Watch this. Are you ready? Yes. Ask. Yes. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But, but I, want, I want to challenge y'all and I want to encourage you. Some of us in here have prayers that we've been holding off because we're afraid of how God's going to respond to how we, how we pray. But this text tells us, ask. Ask God for the blessings. Let, let, me, let me give you the sermon in a sentence. It's a long one, but it's worth it. We Asking God for blessings in prayer is the privilege that every believer has in the kingdom. And that privilege gives us the assurance that we are in his will, seeking his counsel, and strengthening our faith as we trust our Father to give us his best. One more time. Asking God for blessings in prayer is the privilege that every believer has in the kingdom. And that privilege gives us the assurance that we are in his will, seeking his counsel, and strengthening our faith as we trust our Father to give us his best. Now, let me just give it to you very plainly. Stop filtering your prayers. Stop, stop. Uh, uh, let me put it to you this way. Put those things on the list and ask God for what you want. Let God, now here, here's the fun part. Let God do the editing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. Help me hold this prayer. Let God do the editing of your prayer. But when you come to God, you ought to bring your prayer on that prayer paper, on that paper, or from wherever it is. You bring it to God and you give it to Him just as it is. Are y'all with me? 
So, Pastor, how, how, well, well, let me show you, uh, let me show you God's perspective of how he wants us to come. Are you in the text with me? And then afterwards, we're going to see, we're looking at God's perspective, then we're going to look at our perspective and how we should uh, go about this asking. Are y'all with me? Look at God's perspective. Verse 7, actually verse 7 through 8, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open. For everyone who asks receives, the one who, who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be open. It was actually verse 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open. I want you to notice what Jesus says. He says simply ask, right? Three things I'm going to, you're going to hear me say over and over again. Ask, seek, knock. Right? Ask, seek, knock. Now, watch, watch this. These are imperatives. They are, they are commands for us to ask God for everything. But what I love about these imperatives, <clears throat> excuse me, is that God says, I don't want you to just ask me once. I want you to ask me over and over again. He, he, says, he says, I'm literally ask, telling you to ask me. Look at this invitation. Let me, let me put it to you this way for, for the parents in the room. Y'all know when you were growing up that uh, 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 when, uh, when your parents said, ask me again after you asked them multiple times, it wasn't them telling you to ask them. It was a threat. Right? Ask me again. When they said that, that's when you know. The answer was no. It was just hilarious. They never said no. They just said, ask me again. And that's how you knew. It, uh, I've already, I've, 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 I've maxed out my options. <laughs> right? Amen. But God says, I'm not, I'm not, that's not me. God says, I'm not, I'm, that's not the type of father I am. I'm the father that says, no, don't, not, not only do I want you to ask me, but I want you to ask me over and over and over again. Ask, ask me. Like a child that's on a, on a road trip, are we there yet? Are, God says, no, no, no. The invitation is simple. Ask me. Open fear. Ask me. And I think, again, we have this fear that says, I'm afraid because I, 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 don't, I don't know. Will God, watch this, you're not going to like this. Will God strike me if I ask with wrong intentions? Notice the text. Now hear me. James does tell us, we're not rebuking the, uh, rebuking the text. James says, you have not because you ask with wrong intentions. Remember, let God edit that. But God says, no. He doesn't say ask with right intentions. He says, ask. Come, ask me. Ask me. We'll figure out the rest of the stuff. But the point is, you come to me with all that. You, 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 you come to me with all that. Whether it's a good desire or even a bad desire, ask me. Y'all know I work with, with children uh, at my job. And sometimes they, 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 they watch, they ask, boy, they ask some ridiculous questions. So obviously we're, it's out, we're, it's raining outside. It's raining, like downpour. Mr. C, are we going outside? <laughs> like, what makes you think we're going outside? But I go, no, 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 we're not, we're not going outside. And, he, and I go, and, 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 and in my mind, I'm like, we, and, uh, uh, they say, are we going outside? I say, no, we're not going outside. And they say, well, uh, it, I say, can't go outside because it's raining. They say, well, can we play in the rain? And then I said, no, we can't play in the rain because we'll get wet if we go play in the rain. Sometimes it's the little itty bitty babies that are four and cues can be, so you can't yell at them. So you gotta say, no, baby, we gotta, it's raining outside, so we can't play outside. And watch this, and, and, and as, as crazy as the question is, they felt comfortable to ask. That's the point I'm getting. God says, no, 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 no. There's no dumb questions in the kingdom. Ask me. Look at that freedom that just fell off of half of y'all. God says, stop worrying about how I'm at. I don't mean to skip the scripture, uh, skip, uh, 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 go ahead of myself. But when, it, when you go down to verse 9, the text says, or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Jesus is saying, if you ask me for, with wrong intentions or ask me for the wrong reason or ask me for the wrong thing, I'm not going to give you a stone. Don't look for the backlash of God because you asked something bad. No, God says, no, no, ask me. You have an invitation to ask God for everything. Now, let me, let me add this to it. Because many people have looked at this scripture and have, have thought that, hmm, it's going to sound bad, but, but it's the truth. That everybody has 
exclude everybody has access to this invitation. I don't know if you were here last week, but 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 uh, or rather a couple weeks ago last year, uh, we talked about we talked about uh, Matthew chapter seven verse six. Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw uh, pearls to pigs. Right? That sounds very derogatory, but it simply means that they were unbelievers. And what's interesting is we we see God talking about the the unbelievers, but here when Jesus says, "Ask me." He's not talking to those that don't believe in him. He's, he's, he's talking to those that believe Jesus to be Savior. There's an exclusivity here. There, there's, a, there's a distinguishing here. There, there is a bias. Let me say it like Arthur Pink said it. The, the dogs of the world don't get the same benefits as the sheep in the pasture. We you see, we, 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 have, we, have, uh, 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 we have access to God. We, we're not, if God doesn't just, in, watch this, God, God invites those who believe in him to ask him. Let me just put it to you this way. Why would somebody want to ask him if they don't believe him in the first place? But God says, I, 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 got, I got the kingdom people, the people that believe I'm their savior, the people that claim to me, claim that, that I'm their Lord, the people that believe I died for them sin, for their sins, they, they get the benefits. Of the kingdom. See, see, if see, uh, uh, my father uh, may give, uh, give, uh, maybe even some of y'all, even some friends. If you need gas money, my, my father's going to give you money for gas. But if I need gas money, my father said, "Forget the gas money, just take my car." Right. What's the difference? I'm his child. I get benefits. No offense, but it's the same with you and your family. I get benefits that you don't get. And I, you get benefits that I don't get. What's my point? A child of the kingdom gets access to access. Yeah. Everybody doesn't have this access. I'm not saying that there are certain people. No, the certain people are the believers of the kingdom of God. The access that has been given is only for those that have been saved and purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, are y'all still with me? Now watch this. The invitation is also a responsibility. The invitation is also a responsibility. God's perspective is I invite you and, and, and you have access. But then he says, now I need you to look at this from your perspective. That there's a responsibility. What's the responsibility? Look at verse, look at verse 8 again. I'm sorry, look at verse uh, 8. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be open. Notice the cause and effect, Pastor Durell. For everyone who asks, receives. As if to say, if you don't ask. What, what, what does James say? James say, you have not because you asked. You didn't ask. Sometimes I mess with my kids when I'll have like, I'll have like, uh, like extra candy or something. Because you know, I, just, I just be eating. But I'll have candy. You know, wrap candy. And, um, and sometimes I mess with them and they'll say, um, and well, a kid will come and say, can I have one? I'm like, oh, sure. And then someone will come up and be like, why didn't you give me one? I'm like, you ain't asked. <laughs> it's, you have not because you ask not. Now watch this. And, and here's, here's the hard part. Here's the part. Watch this. Help me, Holy Spirit. The, the, the text is implying that sometimes in order to receive from God, Sometimes it will require you to ask, seek, and knock. There are many ways that God can bless you. God can bless you just what you, like, like, for example, you just pray, Lord, I need this. And God just drops, here you go, you know, no problem. Boom, here it is. Sometimes you don't even ask God for things and he blesses you. Perfect example, half of y'all breathing right now. Half of y'all, all of y'all breathing right now. I said half of y'all, that's funny. <laughs> I meant for those of y'all that are asleep. No, I'm just kidding. But look, did, did you wake up and pray for air? No, but it's in your lungs. God, Bible says even the, those that don't believe in him, God blesses, which is ironic that God gives, the, gives them a continual blessing that they didn't ask for because, and they don't even believe in him. That's another story for a different day. But God says, you, you, I, I bless you. I bless whom I want to bless. By my sovereign reign, by my sovereign power, according to my will, I bless you. I reign on the just and the unjust. Theologians will call this common grace. But, 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 but sometimes, 
God says it's 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 gonna it's gonna require a little more of you. Yes, yes. See, sometimes God says, "I want you. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to pray for some things." Yes. But sometimes God says, "I'm gonna ask you to pray through some things." Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. If I pray for it, all right, boom, here it is, no question. Uh -huh. But God says, "No, no, 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 no." Sometimes I'm gonna ask you to do a little more. Uh -huh. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna need you to. I'm going to need you to, to keep praying. Yeah. I'm going to ask you to ask. But after, I, but after you ask, I'm not going to just stop at asking. Yeah. I want you to seek. Yeah. And I'm not just going to ask you to seek. After that, I might ask you to knock. Yeah. He, there, there is, watch this, there's a responsibility on our part. Yeah. And can I be honest with you? I say this because I love you and, and, and I love you as your pastor and I want to lead you and guide you in the word of God. But I believe that this text alone debunks the name and claim it type of prayers. Because you name it and claim it, but that may not be what God wants you to do. Matter of fact, can I get into it? If you have never any scripture in the Bible, Pastor Darrell, when you are to receive something from God, God says, ask whatever in my name. He never says claim. He says, ask, and it will be asked, and it will be given. But he says, whatever you ask in my name, according to my will, I will give it to you. God says over and over, ask, 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 ask. Never claim, 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 claim. I know you don't like it, but I'm going to teach you sound doctrine in this house. He says, ask. Now, how are we, now, now let's go down how the responsibility of what we ought to be doing. First thing, he says, ask. Let's deal with that. Very general. But we are to ask humbly. Yes, yes, yes. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Here's what it means. Ask is very general. The word ask in the original Greek, it's very complicated. It means ask. <laughs> it's not that serious. It's ask. But when we come to God in prayer and ask as a child would ask their father, we are simply admitting to our severe lack in his overabundance. Let me, let me put it to you this way. When we come to God, we are saying, God, I don't know. God, I can't do it. God, there are doors I can't open. There's a humility here because we have to admit there are, watch this, are you ready for this? There are some things we want that we cannot get on our own. Right? There are some things that I want to get to, but I can't get to. Some goals I want to get to, but I can't get to. Some things that I want to happen in my life that I can't do. That we, we have to admit, I can't do it. You know, it's very, very interesting, and, and, and some of y'all will know. Uh, uh, but it's, it's, it's funny when you watch children, especially the toddlers, right? Like Jaden, uh, Jaden's age and, and Mason's age, right? Somewhere around, somewhere around there, maybe even Joe, Joe, how old are you? Yep, even 10 year old. But, but they always say, mom, 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 mom. They ask you over and over again. Even like the two year olds, mom, 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 dad, 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 grandma, grandma, grandma. And you're like, oh boy, you need to go find a job. <laughs> right? Just that too. You're like, go find a job, boy. What are you doing? But hear me. Watch this. Bear with me. Who else can they turn to? Right. Awesome, man. True, right? True, man. Who? Jaden is what? Maybe one, two, two? Jaden's two. What? Is he going to pour his own cereal and milk? It's the same with the body of Christ. We go to God and say, God, I can't do it. There are some things that I want, but I can't reach it. There are some things, wisdom that I want, and I can't get to it unless you reveal it. Some things that I want to do in my life, but I can't do it unless you get involved. There is humility because we are saying, I am lacking, but you, God, are in abundance. There is this, there is this little girl, I, I, I call, I, I'm not going to tell you her name, but I'll call her Rhea. She's the cutest little thing. She's about four, and she admits a T. She has a speech impediment, but she's the cutest little chocolate girl. And when, we, and when she wants toys, she'll grab my hand. She knows she can't open the door to get to the toys. But she'll grab my hand and put my hand on the door saying, you, I can't get to it, but you can. And asking God is saying, I can't get to it, God. I'm getting excited, but you can. I can't open the door, but you can. I can't get to that area in my life, but you can. And God says, yes. Preach, Pastor Covington.
and I'm doing my best. He says, ask. Now, here's the part we don't like. Because now, we got to seek. Asking is simple. Ask, you just, you just ask because you can do it. But seeking, we don't like. Because seeking is means I have to submit to your will. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes, see, see, this is why I don't mean no harm. I don't mean no harm. I'm trying to teach y'all. But this is why we cannot do this. I claim this in Jesus' name because you don't always know the will of God. You don't always know what God has planned for your life. God doesn't always reveal those things. So there's a submission. Now, when I watch this, this word seek in the original uh, uh, Greek, it actually means to inquire. It, it, means that, it, it means that I need to seek and gain information. Let me ask you something. And this, is, and this is why God says you have a responsibility. God says, when was the last time you sought my word for what you're asking for? See, watch this laziness. And I, I'm not trying to call. I'm, listen, we're all in the same boat. Watch the laziness of all of us. You asking for something, but you haven't sought my word about the something that you're asking. See, we just want to receive and move on. No, baby. Did you seek my word for this? Did you meditate on this? Did you see if it was in my will to even ask for it? Now, mind you, God says, I'm not going to stop you from asking. Go ahead and ask. But, but seeking is where, if you will, the wheat and the tear grow together. And now we separate. Because you're asking for something, but it's got to go through the crucible of the word. Yes, yes, yes. You ask for it, but is it in my will? Did you, are you asking for something that's outside of this book? God says, I want you to ask. You are free to ask, but, but, but it's got to pass the test of seeking. Is, is it in here? Did I say I would do it? Did, 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 you, did you talk to me about it? Did you seek my word about it? God says, ask. And, and then he says, I want you to seek my word for it. But, but can I go a little deeper too? God, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to move on. And sometimes God says, God says, you asking for it. And maybe I said yes. But that doesn't remove the seeking. Because just because you're asking for it doesn't mean you know how to operate it well. Don't tell me you want to get married and you haven't seen what it looks like to be a, a godly spouse. Don't tell me you want a, a Fortune 500 company, a, 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 a million dollar company, but you haven't. You don't know how to be a good steward of the money that you got. Don't tell me you want children, but you haven't found out how God says I want you to raise them. Ask, but you need to seek too. I'm moving on. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, here, here's, here's the next part. I'm almost done. Thank you for being patient. God, you are so good. God is faithful. Ask. See? What's the last one, y'all? Uh-oh. Knock is different. Asking and seeking are, are essentially the same thing, right? So let's just say we've asked. Let's just say we've sought his word and it's in his word. But now we got to knock. Knock is persistence. We ask, uh, uh, we, we, we ask uh, humbly, we, so we seek uh, submissively, but now we knock persistently. Now, knock kind of bothers me, if I could be honest. Because watch me, and, and, you'll, and you'll follow me once I say it. If I've asked, and you said yes, and I sought your word, and it's in your will, why am I knocking? God, you said yes. You, 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 I sought your word. It's in your will. So why am I knocking? Knocking is the universal sign all over the world for can I come in? Why am I knocking to come in if you already said I can? Help me to preach, God. Are you catching me? What, what, why? God says, I got two reasons. God says, watch this. Number one, urgency. Do you really want do you really want it? Watch this. Are you asking for this because of your temporary situation? Are you asking for a permanent blessing in a temporary place? Do you really want it? Or are you just bored? Y'all don't want to talk to me. I know I'm in the book. Do you really want it? I, I, 
I, y'all know, I'm, I, like I said, I work with children. And, and Sister Rel, I have mastered. I've been in, I've, I've worked with children, y'all may not know this, but I've worked in, in the school district for 10 years. 10 years? Somewhere 9 or 10. I'm in there somewhere. 10 years. I have, I have mastered the ability to tell if they really got to go to the bathroom. Oh, that's right. I've mastered it. Sister Christine, I've mastered it. I got it to a science. Pastor Roy, you know it. I'm sure you know it too. He know how to do it too. We, we all know. I, I've mastered it. Why, how do you, how do you, cause, cause here, let me, let me give it to you. Because, see, when, when they say, cause sometimes they gotta go to the bathroom, but sometimes they wanna play in the bathroom. Right, 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 right. That's another story for a different day. I ain't, I ain't gonna get on my soapbox. But, 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 they say, Miss C, can I go to the bathroom? And I look at him. And I say, I say, um, the teacher says you gotta wait two minutes because the, the custodian. I'm lying, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. I lied. I was just, I lied. But I said the teacher says they got the teacher says the custodian's gotta clean the bathroom. If you can wait two minutes, I'll let you go. Now what's the test? The test is they go in and play and forget all about it. They, cause they, cause they didn't really have to go. They wanted to play in the bathroom. Watch this. But the ones that really gotta go. Mr. C, they, at this point, they doing the dance. And at this point, I'm getting worried because they just might. And I say, no, you go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead. Why? The urgency. Mr. C, I really got to go. I wonder. The urgency, watch this. God says, if, if, I, if you knock on the door and, you, and I don't open it, are you going to move on? How bad do you want it? Because if you really don't want it, you're gonna look at the denial and think, you're gonna look at the delay and think it's a denial and walk away. But God says, if you really want it, I'm gonna stay right there and keep knocking. God is saying, how bad do you want? But but there's another one. But here's another one, and then and then I'm almost done. But God says, but God says, there's a persistence. What's the persistence? Watch this. Watch this. God says, do you really believe that I said yes? You've asked, you've sought, and I told you the door will be open. And, but if it doesn't open in the time that you need it to be open, do you really believe that I said yes? Will you keep knocking after I said, watch this, the persistence of your prayer is the evidence of your faith. Do you really believe God said you can have it? Or are you going to be persistent in prayer in it? God, I believe by your word that you said I can have it. But yet the door is not open. That's all right. I'm going to keep knocking because God said it's mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Watch this. I'm not knocking hoping that he will open the door. I'm knocking because I know he will open the door. Yeah. Watch this. My persistent, my persistent knocking or wearing God out in prayer is not going to force God to open the door, but it's my faith, in fact, that he said he will do it that keeps me knocking. Watch me. Before I knocked, I asked and you said it would be given. Before I knocked, I saw that it was in his will. So now I'm knocking because he told me that the door will be open. Watch this. What does that mean? That means I'm not shaken by delay. Y'all not hearing me. Preach, Pastor Compton. I'm preaching to myself. I'm not shaken by what's stuck. I'm not shaken by any holds up. Because whether it's here, now, or later, it's mine. Why? Because I, I asked, I sought, and now he says, here's the door. Stand here and open. And for nothing else, watch this. Why am I opening? Why are you knocking on this door? Because God invited me. He invited me. So why are you opening this door? God invited me to this door. I don't know what he's doing, but I'm going to keep on knocking because he said when he comes, it's for me. I'm sorry I'm getting excited, but what God has for me is for me. And so I'm going to be right here. Open up. Why? Because you said it's mine. Are you hearing me in here? Don't be moved by the land. Let your faith fuel your prayer. Let his promises fuel your prayer. Let his, let his word fuel your prayer. If God said it, that settles it. I'm going to be here. Elijah went up on the mountain. God told him, when you see Ahab, yeah, there's going to be rain. 
Elijah saw Ahab, but yet there was no rain. Bible says that he took his head, put it in between his legs, and he prayed. And he looked at his servant, servant, what do you see? He said nothing. What did he do? He prayed again. Looked up, what do you see? Nothing. He went down and he prayed again. Looked up, what do you see? Nothing. And he prayed again. Looked up, what do you see? Nothing. He prayed again. Why? Because God told me it's going to rain. And I'm going to keep on knocking until he opens the door. Are y'all hearing me in here? Keep knocking, saints. Because it's mine. Hallelujah. 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 Keep knocking. Got to go now because I'm getting excited. Thank you for the joy in the pulpit, God. Great, sir. Which leads me to my final thought. This is quarter. There ought to be an expectation. Come on, somebody. Look at what the text says. Ask. And it what? Will be. You got it, brother Will. Will be. Give it. The expectation. He will. He. Did the, the, the church say will? Will. He will. Now, I don't mean to be a Debbie Donner, but we got we to gotta look at this objectively. We got to look at this in the scripture. Because notice again. You ask, you seek, you knock. You're not saying what it is, you're asking God for it. Yeah. Which means, watch this, that it's that whatever you're asking for, it still must be subjected to the sovereign will of God. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? You've asked, you sought now, because 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 listen, I know we want to uh, listen, I want to get excited and hoop too, but let's look at all of this. Because let's be honest. Some things we ask God, and he says no. I, said, I don't like that part either. Sometimes we ask God, and he says no. Watch this. We ask, and God says, seek my will. And you look in the book, and it ain't in there. He says no. Sometimes God says, I got a door for you, but not that door. Sometimes the answer is no. Now, here's the question. Pastor, how can I have expectation if God says no? What kind of expectation? I'm down now to verse 9. Or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Watch this. Here, here's the expectation. See, our assurance is not in that he gives us exactly what we ask for. Our assurance is in the fact that he's a good father. Watch me. Watch me. I'm not saying God won't. No, no, no. God definitely can and will give you exactly what you ask for. Don't be deterred by that. But for those of us that might have been faced with a no, God says there's still an expectation. Why? Because God knows how to give good gifts. God knows. Watch this. I say this to my family all the time. God knows what you need. And if God says no, watch this. That must mean that must mean that that was God's best. God says, whether I say yes or no, you can know that whatever I give you, it's my best. <laughs> Watch me. I don't ever have to worry about missing out on anything. Why? Because if God says no, then that means he got something else. And if God says yes, excellent. But either way, he's a good father. He, I'm not missing out on anything. If God gave this to me, then I am assured in my soul that this is what the best that God has to offer. Yes, that's right, yes. Are y'all hearing me in here? Yes. God says he, he's, a, he's a good God. Yes. He's a good father. He says expect it. Yes. Expect 
Expect, expect. Expect that everything will go well. Expect that even if it's no, God says, I'm going to take care of you. Yes, yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I'm done. I'm done. But let me say this. When we, when we, when we come to God humbly and we, and we ask him, I want you to catch this and I want you to put this in your mind because sometimes we don't really like the word no. But God says, but God says, who else knows better than me? God says, I'm omnipotent, I'm omniscient, I'm all-knowing, I'm all-powerful, and I could be everywhere and anywhere at the same time. God says, who else will know what's best for you but me? So when God is saying, ask me, or God is saying, tell me what you want, and if I tell you no, God says, who else can give you a better offer? My father used to say this. He always, when we used to play Monopoly, oh boy, I told you, y'all will never play Monopoly with Pastor. Y'all won't want me to be your pastor ever again after Monopoly. I won't do it. I love y'all too much. I can't do it. I'm very competitive. Run me my money. I don't care where you are. Sorry. That's just that. Um, but, but my father will always say, my father has to say, he says, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. He usually makes an offer I can't refuse. But <laughs> he said, I'm going to make you an offer I can't refuse. And God is saying, if I tell you no, who's going to give you a better offer than me? Right, right, Who else has more knowledge than me? Yeah, yeah. Who else can open doors? I'm getting excited. But me. Yeah. Who else can take you where you need to go but me? So if I say no, you can go to anybody else, but everything else will be a, dem a demotion. Yeah, yeah. God says, ask me. And I'll take care of the rest. Ask to seek me. I'll say, and I'll show you if it's in my will. And if you want that door open, nobody can open it but me. So God says, I'm done. Ask, seek, and knock. And if he says no, he's still a good father. Stand to your feet. I'm good. Thank you for listening to the word. We're praying that the word of God edified you. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, we want to invite you. We want to invite you to know Christ as your Savior. A couple of things that we need to do here is simple is that uh, you need, we need to confess our sins. Uh, uh, confess and say, Lord, I have sin in my life and I need that sin removed. And the only way that that sin can be removed is when we confess that Jesus is Lord, that he died for our sins, and he was resurrected and is seated at the right hand of the Father. So you simply just need to say, Lord, I have sins. Forgive me for those sins. I receive you as Savior, and I believe by faith that you are Lord and that you are the Lord of my life and you have redeemed me from my sins. And just like that, you have salvation. Just like that, you know the Lord for yourself. Uh, one thing that we've learned, uh, and, and we know at Union here at our church, uh, uh, we would uh, uh, we would love for you to be a part of our church. But at the same time, um, if you wish to go to another church or you want uh, uh, know someone else, that's fine too. But one thing is certain, and, and, uh, you don't have to be here to be saved. Uh, you know the Lord for yourself. So uh, if you have any uh, questions or concerns, I would uh, advise you to go to our email. Uh, our email is unionbaptist.southriverenj at gmail.com. That's unionbaptist.southriverenj at gmail.com. If you have any questions, concerns, or if you just, uh, uh, even during this pandemic, you want to reach out and say, I want to be a part of this great church, you can do that as well. And we will contact, be in contact with you, and uh, we'll give you information on how to join the church and whatnot. Amen. I pray all is well with you. Uh, grace and peace.